Eileen Gilbert Scott was a young woman living in Norway with her mother during the German occupation. She was introduced to Milog, the main German resistance movement, and a secret compartment was built in the wall of her house to hide a radio with which she could listen to and decipher coded messages transmitted between Norway and London. Eileen's mother was arrested by the Gestapo after another resistance member gave her address under torture, forcing Eileen into hiding until Milog organised her escape to Sweden. I met a girl who I had been to high school with, and she said, would you like a job? Anyway, I went to this address to make contact with the resistance. Uh, I still didn't know anything at all about it. And then after that, I had a telephone call from a man saying, uh, have you advertised boots for sale in the paper? And I said, yes, I do. And he said, well, could you bring them? And we could meet on the corner of the railway station. And I will carry a newspaper under my arm. He had to be sure that anything he said on the telephone was not something which could have been overheard by anybody. And it was sort of getting dark in the late afternoon. And there were several people on the railway station with newspapers under their arm. And um, this man came up to me. He turned out to be a turned out to be a rather highly thought of barrister. And then he said, Well, we are Milog, uh, which I understood as to be the short of military organization. And uh, anyway, he said, uh, the next thing is for you to go to a certain address and time, fairly near where I lived, and a girl opened the door to me. And, and there sat around the table four, five people, and they had masks on. It was for important for them to see me, and important for them that, that I didn't see them. But in a small town, people know each other. This was a world I knew nothing about, and uh, so uh, I suppose in a way I thought it was quite exciting. Uh, I passed that interview, and so the next step was to meet a young woman who would take me to the loo in the university building. That is when I was introduced to the code. The carpenter came to the flat and built a secret room in the, what you call, skirting board, big enough for the code to be kept in. Messages came in in the evening and we had to work in the night to get them out, get the code sorted. I worked with another woman part of the time. Petra, unfortunately, was tortured. She gave my address. I think I was extremely lucky to get away with it because I, Petra was tortured and it must have been a pretty bloody awful thing. And my mother saw her, bedraggled looking thing. I think she probably thought she was drunk. But it was Petra who had been tortured. But my mother was not by the Germans in the hope that I would come forward to rescue my mother. They won't get anything out of her. Mama's tough old bird. And quite rightly, she, when they came to arrest her, she said, I completely and utterly disapprove of my daughter. We were never we were never safe in any place. Uh, always, people didn't really want to house people like me at the time because it put their whole families at risk. I think I have been absolutely rigid with her several times, particularly when I was in hiding, when I was going through a checkpoint, uh, with my hair dyed, with rimmed glasses, and looking different and with a false identity papers to go through the checkpoint. And then you think, now nah, it's going to happen. And then by a miracle, they let you go. It isn't glamorous. It is everything but. It's frightening and it's full of hardship. I would say, looking back, I would say that I have met people I would never have met otherwise, and people I uh, admire tremendously, because to me, they were the heroes. They were the people who actually 
just rather did the job, got on with it, and never was given a medal. I hope some of them were. I think people ought to know how unglamorous war is, really. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.